business plans. If you're like me, then you'd rather cut the lawn at the whacker with nail scissors than do a business plan. And I have a lot of friends with nail scissors in their hands ready to cut lawn as well. But you know, in our heads, it's all much harder than it is in reality. And I have Sophie Mahia of Artists Marketing Academy with me today. She loves business planning, weirdo, and loves making it simple and non-threatening for people like us with nail scissors. Welcome to Taking Care of Business, Sophie. Oh, thank you so much, Jane. <laughs> Just got my nails out and waving them. <laughs> Probably haven't had it described quite like that before. No. Well, you have now. That's a first for everything. That's a first, absolutely. So now I'm not the only one that balks at creating a business plan, no. am I? No, definitely not. Pretty much everybody I meet would, as you say, I, I, I was thinking of lots of other different things. They'd rather do anything than actually make a business plan. Why is that? Why do we, why do we hate it so I, much? I think it's because we have this concept in our head that it's a door stopper, that it's like a huge book that's become something that you wedge the door open with and it's full of pie charts and excel spreadsheets and stuff that we just make us feel feel sick actually Uh, whereas instead it doesn't have to be anything like that at all you know it just does not sink in doesn't matter how many times I hear it, it it doesn't sink in maybe I think it's because I have to make a bunch of decisions when it comes to business planning definitely if I have to make a decision and the first decision that most people actually turn green at is how much money do I want to make in the first year of my business the second or the third yeah that's kind of tricky yeah so that's the first question that you need to ask yourself before you create the business plan it is in a kind of way um it I like to ask that question first because it normally gets somebody's response Really, the whole purpose of a business plan is to work out if your idea is actually going to be viable because so many people have a product or service and they've maybe fallen in love with that product or service, right? And they think, oh, I'm going to launch it to the world. But if there aren't enough people interested in that product or service, then I'm afraid it's going to be disappointment. So although in terms of money, you definitely want to know what that is, there's a bit of research that needs to happen before you ask yourself how much you want to make. Yeah, and it's the research bit that, again, most people, here come the scissors and the grass <laughs> <laughs> or don't, anything else. Don't make me research. Ah, absolutely. So why do we need a business plan? What is it that, you know, can we be successful without a business plan? Uh, what do they say? No business plan, no business. That, oh. was, that was one of the first quotes I learned way back when, when I had my art business. And I mean, there's an awful lot of stats out there that are not in my head today. <laughs> but um, I do know that there's a huge proportion. It's like the 80-20 rule, isn't it? 80% of businesses, if they've got a business plan, they're going to go ahead. And, um, if, you know, if, if they haven't got a business plan, then it's just not happening. Because it, it, you wouldn't take a holiday without planning where you're going, would you? You wouldn't just stand at the airport and go, I'm going to go on holiday for the next three weeks. I have no idea where I'm going. I haven't organised a budget to go there. I've packed no clothes to go there. I haven't told my boss I'm taking three weeks off. Um, people seem to think that they're going to start a business like that. I know. I've got this great product. Let's just go for it. You've got to find out if it's viable. You've got to find out if there's a want and a need. Okay, now I kind of understand mm. why I don't do business planning because I'm almost at that stage ah. with holidays. I just turn up at the... <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, dear. So does every business need a business plan or is it just big businesses, little businesses? I totally believe that, that every business needs a business plan. So you know, if you look at the really big businesses, they've all got really... those The door stoppers, yeah. right? But let's look at people like you, know, you and I, solopreneurs, one man bands, um, you definitely need to know where you're going. You need to know who is your market, what are your products and services, what's your pricing point, uh, how many of those do you need to sell in your first month, every month, in your first year. You know, what are the expenses going to be to run it on going? Um, where's that income going to come from? What's the profit margin going to be? And that's why, again, most people turn green. I've discovered the people I work with anyway um, when I mention the numbers. And it's, you've got to learn to love the numbers, right? You've got to learn to, because the numbers are the core of your business. You know, how many have you got to sell at a set amount of pro, you know, money in order to break even at the end of the month and then move into profit? A few of the things you've just mentioned then are things that we, as business owners, we kind of have in the back of our mind anyway. Yep. We just haven't put them all in one place. That's right. Like down on paper. Yeah. 
Yeah. And, and that's the other scary thing. It doesn't have to be a pie chart, an Excel spreadsheet or a Word document. It can just be a notepad. Do you know what? I even start my business plans on an A1 sheet of paper on the floor with coloured felt tip pens and post-it notes, my favourite things. And I move those around um, until I've got it, until I've worked out what's going on where. It's like, OK, well, wait a minute. I'm actually writing a business plan at the moment for a secret business. Um, and I've got it all going on like that. Coloured pens, uh, pencils I can rub out, post-it notes I can pull off and move. Um, and making decisions based on the research I'm doing online. <laughs> so for even people, because you mentioned you were um, you had an art business, so yeah. even people like musicians, absolutely, that's a business, isn't uh, it? Totally. Listen, anybody who's out there with a product or service and they're selling it and they're making money, that's a business. And it really depends how you set yourself up. Most people like that will set up as a solo, you know, sole trader. Um, and it's super simple. But yeah, you need a plan. <laughs> well, I'm one of those people that go on holidays with just my first destination in mind. That's it. Then whatever else happens, happens. Probably not good for business. Possibly not good for business. <laughs> no. I mean, you, you, you know, you might get off the ground. You might, you might get in that aeroplane, let's say. But then after that, a lot of people will start with selling something and then peter out because they've got no ongoing plan. Uh, so what's the hardest thing that you've found to to get your head around to process with a business plan? Oh, for me, I think it is, it is a lot of it is about the numbers. I grew up with my father was a maths teacher. Unfortunately, I didn't inherit that skill. <laughs> so just having to learn and get my head around, okay, what, what is, what is, what all the numbers mean? You know, what does actually turnover mean? What is net profit, gross profit? What are these things? And they're all really easy to learn. And I think most people stop because they don't understand some of the real basics and there's a great friend out there called Google <laughs> <laughs> who can help us with everything but it's all learnable and I think I think that's the key so the hardest part very often for people is numbers unless you're a detailed person in which case the big planning the goal setting the where am I going to take this in the future then that's going to be their challenge and they'll manage with the now details but they won't actually be able to plan ahead and work out how am I going to get there Okay, so you don't actually need, need, I say that in inverted commas, mm. to do the numbers. It helps. But <laughs> can you actually get somebody to help you with oh, the numbers? Of course you can. Absolutely. Let's think about this. Every area's got a specialism. So if numbers are not your areas, I'd look up the local accountant or bookkeeper and say, hey, look, I'm you know, wanting to put this plan together. Um, you know, is there any way you can help me? There's also some really uh, here in WA. There's some really fantastic websites that you can go to, that you can that also help you with that sort of thing as well. So there's there's help out there, or you find somebody who's already run a bit of a business, um, and ask them for help. A lot of people think you have to do it all yourself, and I think one of the things I've learned over the years is ask for help. Don't be afraid to ask for help. It's better to ask for help, fill out all the blanks. Um, then not to bother at all and just think, oh, I can wing it. Because when you wing it, you're going to end up in trouble. Actually, okay, now I'm feeling a little bit more positive because I really like the idea of finding a friend and, like, you bring you and your brain and you some sparkling conversation. I'll bring the bottle of wine and, and Perfect. let's Absolutely. create a business plan. It could be on the creative side of business. Definitely. Bit. It could be. And you listen, having somebody else giving you feedback, you yeah. say, listen, you know, I've got this great idea. What do you think? And they say, oh, that sounds great. But what about this or what about that? And then you go, oh, I haven't thought about that because the most thing I've experienced is people are in love with their product and service and they're not in the head of their target customer. They don't know who the target customer is. They don't do the research to find out who they are or where they are. Um, and all they're trying to do is then push their product or service out to the masses. So let's talk about your super simple A A1 size piece of paper. It doesn't have to be A1 if you don't yeah, have so A1. It can yeah. be A4. Yeah. Let's talk about this because this is your, your simple, like, LCD, lowest common denominator, <laughs> business plan that we can all probably Kindergarten do. level, oh, yeah. Kindergarten <laughs> level. That's what I like. How does this work? Well, what it works for me is I write down what's the business idea. See so if you can summarize that in a sentence. What is it you're going to sell, products or services? Who is going to be buying those? How are you going to get that product or service in front of those people? So marketing and sales. And then how are you going to help them to purchase that 
product or service, the sales bit. Um, and what are you going to need to do maybe up front? Maybe you need to put some money in up front if it's a premises or something like that, or you just want a bit of a starter fund. Um, and how are you actually going to do like branding as well? It's really, really important getting a good logo and a branding look and getting establishing a presence. And these days online, because we have so many fantastic ways of getting our message out there. But I just find that once you start working this down and then you start cracking the numbers, well, okay, so this is my product. Product A is priced at this. And my goal is to turn over X at the end of the year. How many of those do I need to sell in order to reach that? It's not difficult. Of course, there are many more layers, but you start with that. And back in the day when I had the art business in the UK, I sat down with a calculator on the floor and went, oh, I need to paint this number of paintings and I need to sell that percentage of them. It was about 20 or 30 percent of them each month in order to get the money I needed, you know, to keep my kids fed and my mortgage paid etc etc that's what it knuckles down to of course there's many more layers but if you start with that it's better to have that than have nothing at all and then I guess you've got that target like if I need to sell 10 paintings or yep. like get if I'm a muso I have to do 10 gigs yep absolutely. or whatever it is at this amount of money or whatever it is then you can do whatever it is in your marketing plan correct to get there you can also do an assessment because you might say I don't actually have enough time to deliver for that in the week and then you have to sit back and scratch your head and work out well how else because that's a different lots of different business models out there so maybe you don't just make all your money from the gig maybe you make the money from selling something at the gig or maybe you make the money from having something bigger and different several times a year or you do some online sales or you know, there's various different ways to structure your business there's not just one way mm-hmm. and that's why doing the plan you'll be able to work through well hold on that structure doesn't work so now let me try well how would it be if I did this structure oh that works better you know because it is a lifestyle thing we don't want to be burning out we choose to open a business rather than have a job but we don't want to be working 24 7 right it's That's about it. balance or 35 7 or 35 <laughs> 7 <laughs> I don't know I'm, I'm developing that new with plenty of coffee uh yes now I've seen I've, I've heard you talk about this other business plan that you've got with the A4 piece of paper where you fold it mm-hmm. into quarters mm. Yes. Yes. Oh, look, she's excited about I'm that so one. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favourite thing to do. So I think it's really, really important to know what you're going to be doing for the next year. So for me, I always start with one year because more than a year ahead, you have no idea really what's going to happen. So you can make some general idea. So I take a large piece of paper. You can do it with an A4 as well. Fold it into four. And then I think about quarters. What are the big picture things I want to achieve in quarter one? It might be launching something. It might be having a gig, having an exhibition, a show, launching your business maybe. And then you look at quarter two. Well, okay, what, what could I do that's big in quarter two, three and four? And then essentially, you've really got four different big things you could launch in that particular time frame. And again, you whip out the calculator and you work out, OK, how, how much do I need to make at each launch and how am I going to do that? And then once you've done that, you've got to make the plan. How am I going to market that? How am I going to get the bums on seats, the people to that? And it sort of starts from there, really. Yeah, that's a yeah. that's a nice, simple way of doing it. Absolutely. Now, also tell us, because I'm a little bit excited about your post-it note concept. <laughs> post-it note. In, so is that just you taking that? It's movable. Yeah. I know people who've written a book on a train with post-it notes. So they've just been chucking along on a, on a, I guess, a fairly long distance journey. Mm. Post-it notes are out, slap them on the window. So there's idea <laughs> A, B, C, D. And then because you can move them, right? You pull them off and stick them somewhere else. So I'll often write, oh, my products or services, ideas. You know, when I was coming up with the Artist Marketing Academy, I had no idea how it was going to look. It literally unfolded day by day. So I would write down ideas for workshops. I just wrote the topics on different post-it notes and then I stuck them down. It's like, oh no, I can't fit all of those into that quarter. I'll pull those ones off or tear those ones up or try and or do it in a different way. Maybe I'll make those three into a course. So I'd stick them together and slap that on a different quarter. And it was fast and immediate. It's fun. It's creative. And you're not stuck at a computer with an Excel spreadsheet going nowhere. Yeah, that gets a little tiresome, doesn't, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, like, oh, I'm sick of looking at screams. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, yeah. so the first place we should start is with a piece of paper. Definitely. Yeah. And, you know, if, 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 you're, not, if you're scared of the decision making, use a pencil and a rubber. <laughs> yeah, or post it notes. Or post it notes. Pull them you, off. You, can, you're not, you know, you're not committed. Into, and don't think that that first draft, it is a first draft. Just because you've written it down doesn't mean to say that's the business you're going to do. You write it down and you work on it and you 
you know, move things around. You get feedback from others. And only when you've decided it works, do you then go ahead and action it. Absolutely. And that's the beauty of post-it notes as well. Absolutely. Like you can just pick them up and move them. You can. So much fun. <laughs> so uh, get a piece of paper divided into four, create kind of a, a calendar or a schedule of things yeah. that you yeah, want to happen. Definitely. Depends. If you're a detailed person, you're going to break down. Sometimes I've got the, you know, every month in there and then every week of every month. But I am a detailed person underneath the, you know, the smiles and the blonde and purple <laughs> the, hair. The fluffy exterior. <laughs> the fluffy yeah. exterior. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, create, a, create a calendar type of business plan mm. or just get a, a, a one piece of paper and write down those high level. Yeah, high level things, things for each quarter. And sometimes that seems more achievable for people, especially the creative types. Because if you're a creative, you're not necessarily going to be selling something day in, day out or week in, week out. It might just be something that you're building up to over two months. So therefore that fits in the quarter plan. And both of those things actually work quite nicely together. Absolutely, yeah. And the most the most important thing, you can always phone a friend. Correct. And you should phone a friend. And Oh, and you shouldn't, you shouldn't ask your family members because they love you. And they'll look oh. at it and go, oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> what a great idea. You need to ask someone who's going to give you open, honest opinions. Like the best friend that goes... Nah, that that really doesn't work. Or, you know, you've got to look at that and look at that again. You need someone who will be open and honest with you. Reality check. Reality check. The reality check. Perfect. Definitely. Thank you very much, Sophie Mahia of Artist Marketing Academy. Thank you so much, Jen, for having me. Right. I'm excited now. (laughs) Do you want to come over for a glass of wine? Yeah, some post-it notes. Yeah, let's do that. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. Thank you so much. Taking care of business. We'll be back next Monday at 10.30.